way trouble. I'm way trouble, dude. Hey, guys, back up. I'll buy you it! Do more with less ammo. That's what everyone wants to know right now. Do more with less ammo. The advanced 50 round CCW test. Guys, even if you're just doing dry fire or airsoft or pellet guns or 22 right now, you need to learn this test. This is really the stuff that I think is beneficial if you're at an advanced level or if you want to get there, even if you're doing it dry fire, to get you to different positions, different verbal de-escalation tactics, and all the things I think you will need in real world confrontations, of which I have had quite a lot, both uh, firearms related in the last few years and in my years and years and years and years of martial arts experience travel, traveling the world, real self-defense situations, uh, training MMA forever, etc. and so forth. You fight how you train. So you're not always just relaxed and trying to make little group sizes. That's not how it goes down. So guys, I hope this benefits everybody. Uh, this is really coming from my review of my friend's, my older friend's pistol before I give it to him. Unfortunately, I was doing the Rex Delta review and they wouldn't let me draw at that other range. So I got this range, doing it now, and you'll see it from drawing. But that's good so you can learn both. So if you're not at the level where your range doesn't allow, you can go to the Rex Delta review and see everything from the low ready. Here you can see it, even if you're not ready yet, like I said, you could be doing a dry fire airsoft pellet gun, uh, and, you know, a BB gun, and learning how to do things, I think will be a benefit to everyone. Hope you enjoy it, and I am actually working with the Rex Delta again today because they scored me a 50 round box of reman ammo. So, here we go. Fifty rounds, fifteen stages. First stage, hands down, cover, too high, pectoral index, headshot. So the first four stages are at contact distance, guys. My style is a lot is up close, a lot is in medium, and a lot is at long range. You have to be able to be in different positions in all of those. So this is hands down. You're surprised. You do a cover. You draw. You do two from high pectoral index and maybe a little step back as you're safe. No one's in the range right now. And you do a headshot. All right. So would you always do this? No, if it's equal disparity of force. But if there's a different disparity of force, you're an old man, it's a punch, or his hands behind his leg, that probably means he's going to stab you in the neck. Maybe you don't fire, but you draw. So, you know, it's prepared for that. And guys, keep in mind that Delta is a very lightweight pistol, very thin pistol. It's similar to a single stack. So groups are not as tight as if I was using a heavy full-size pistol obviously keep that in mind but that's realism because most people are probably carrying a single stack well this has got uh, awesome goodness capacity wise even though it's that size all right here we go two in the heart one right in the t-box perfect all right guys, stage two is basically the same as stage one, except now you're doing it from a fence. You're a little bit staggered, you're doing it from the fence, not a confrontational stance, and you cover and go. Again, all situations, maybe you don't shoot. But this is something you have to practice, is contact distance, different positions, etc. As well as, like I said, he could be pulling a knife, trying to stab you right in the neck, slash you in the neck, stab you in the heart. Okay, we've seen that all the time on videos. It could be multiple people confronting you, you know, riot situation, uh, etc. So, here we go again, but this time from, hey guys, what's going on? Hey, I don't want any pro on. I don't want any pro. Oh. And uh, I split my target a little too much. All right, guys, on to stage three and four, which are identical to each other, and that is from a fence and de escalation tactics. You're talking to a guy or confronted by multiple people, and now he starts to pull a weapon. All right, so we go with the Tiger Palm Strike. It's a, it is a hit, but these are going in the eyes. As you lift your shirt, whether you're carrying three o'clock or, you know, appendix. Guys, if you're carrying behind the waist, this may not be safe to do all this at a range. So you probably shouldn't be carrying there anyway. But, okay, so here, power step out at the same time. You push off your left foot like a boxer, you go to the right, and you lift your shirt and you pass off one or the other and you do your Mozambique. So it looks something like this, boom. I'm stepping off the center line. My right hand and my left hand work at the same time. I'm lifting my cover garment, we're flying it open, and now I'm establishing my stance and my, my base, and I'm doing a Mozambique to the guy. So, 
Hopefully the target doesn't split. Usual targets will split this close, guys. These are heavy card stock from targetsonline.com. Excellent targets. Uh, it did split a bit. We'll see what happens. Hey, man, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble, dude. Hey, guys, back off. I'll buy you Boom. Two perfect center mass and one in his brain pan, and the target is a little low, so I'm not surprised by that. All right, guys, stage four is the same. My target splitting, it usually doesn't do it. I think there's a hard cardboard behind that, so it's not flying back like it usually does to roll with the punches. That's okay, I'll go to my car and get another one. But stage four is the same thing. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I don't want to choke, man. I'll buy you a beer, dude. Relax, man. I'm sorry. Whoa! Perfectly in the tee box and center mass again. There we go. All right, guys, before I uh, change targets, we're looking at... Stage number five, one and a half to two yards. All these first five stages, guys, is contact distance. Uh, contact, contact, one and a half to two yards. So um, this one is a one and a half to two yards. Bill Jordan step out or Bill Jordan gangster lean, whatever you want to call it. I am drawing, doing my power step out, getting off the X, getting off the center line, doing two from gun elbow. In the old times where cops, guys, outside waistband holsters, usually rest your elbow at there. You can do retention shooting, old school speed rock, not really done anymore. Uh, but bent elbow technique uh, here, and then headshot. So I'm gonna do that on this target before getting new one. Okay, Bill Jordan, against the lead. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up? Jump it out! Ooh, and I might be dead. I fouled my draw. That doesn't happen that often, but I'm it's cold weather today, so I got a sweatshirt on, not a t-shirt, and a foul. That's why you train people. All right, on stage five, guys, I messed up a little bit. I should have been pushed a little bit farther back from contact distance. Instead of arm reach, contact distance, it should have been just a little bit farther, maybe one, one and a half yards for the bridge when you step out. Okay, now on to stage six. Three from high compress ready. Uh, so already gun out, already in high compress ready for this one. You could draw if you wanted to. Uh, depending on what you want. Free from high compress ready. And all three hit the spine. Shows you what your spine to his spine, if you guys are parallel, right? Uh, proprioception. Important lesson there. I have only done this one a few times, but I know it's something I need to put in my repertoire, as should you. And guys, look at my combatives of Street Jiu Jitsu DVD, four and a half hours on BJJ Fanatics, highly rated. If you don't know how to move like this and do gun through, you don't know how to fight, you don't know how to retain your weapon, you don't know how to handle the things before the level of having to actually pull the trigger. So it's very important stuff. Okay, guys? All right, guys, stages six through nine, as we just saw, are pistol out already. So this is stage seven at going back now from one and a half yards to three yards, pistol out from modified car position, verbal tactics, and then three shots. Verbal tactics and three shots. There's scenarios where you might draw the gun and not fire, try to talk someone down. You, they're kind of a deadly threat. They may have a bat or something like that. You're trying to get a car or a barrier in between you. This is real world type training, all right? Modified car positions mean it's only three yards. You're not at full extension hanging out, holding someone at gunpoint where they can easily reach out or quickly come stab you or just interfere like you saw with that woman versus the guy with knights. I think the cop in Michigan, you know, a hand on the slide will make it jam. You know, even if it's just for a microsecond in between firing. Okay, so uh, modified car position. I like this for searching in hallways as well. Elbow in tuck for structural, just like marine sniping back in the day, and here we are, okay, picking up that front dot. Back off, man! I said back off! Back off! And uh, in the spine and heart and lung, perfect. Stage eight, going back to five yards, pistol out in the Sewell position, Sewell snap to double tap. The Sewell snap to double tap. We're here in our Sewell position, Sue position here, guys. Make a triangle here. If you are at a range with other people, guys, make sure that you're pointed a little more down than to the left for safety. Obviously, it's in front of your feet. That's why you have the sewer position, this hand on top, is so you can move in a crowd or not be muzzling somebody while you're de-escalating in certain situations or moving through the crowd without muzzling the legs and etc. and it's in front of your own leg. 
okay? So, stool position, and then you're gonna snap to a double tap because suddenly the potential threat became an instant deadly threat and you have to deal with it with deadly force. Okay, so starting from the stool position, Again, yeah. safe board pelvic reholster. All right, guys, stage nine. Now moving back to seven yards. Pistol at the lowest ready. You are muzzling the target, but you're trying to keep your peripheral vision on where his hands are. Is there a weapon? De-escalation. Uh, you know, before you tunnel vision in on the sights. So a low ready, but a high low ready, if you will. And this kind of also teaches you the verbal and the tooler drill, 21 feet, Dan and Asano, a knife. Really, guys, it teaches law enforcement 30 feet now. It better be 30 feet. Better know about more like 10 yards, not 7 yards. 30 feet, not 21 feet rule uh, or tooler rule or drill. Okay, so from the low ready, you're going to come up and do two headshots. Maybe that's not necessarily your skill level, what you're doing. But again, guys, we're training also for precision shooting and being comfortable and making ourselves more skilled with these 50 rounds. So, I'm going to verbalize, drop the knife, or it could be gun or weapon. But I think it's good and important to drop the knife because it happens so often. Drop the knife! There we go. All right, guys, we'll be going on to stage 10, but I wanted to show you the results so far. The first target, everything was actually perfect in the head and earlier in that split. So then we went to this target, and out of the 10 shots here, nine are vitally important, you know, most likely fight stoppers. One wouldn't be, but remember, everything we've done so far is two or three shots, so at least one of them would have been an upper thoracic critically important hit. One, really, this wouldn't do a lot. The four in the spine would, the four in the heart would, two in the lungs would pretty much, but not immediately, unless it was psychological, and uh, the two in the head would have, and he has a very small head. So we're changing targets so he can see better on this guy going to stage 10 at seven yards. All right, everybody, make sure you smash that subscription button. Help me out. Algorithms obviously screwing me, and I've gotten very few views on this kind of stuff. And I'm having to redo this today so I can do it from holster to make you a better shooter and able to survive an unfortunate gunfight. So, guys, please smash the subscription, the notification bell, the thumbs up, and all that. I greatly appreciate it. Remember, this is expensive. I didn't really have to reshoot it, but I'm trying to get you skills out there. Who knows how long I'll, uh, you know, might take down a lot of videos in the next month. Uh, you know, because of platform and everything that's going on. But I wanted you to be able to have it. So this is about surviving a gunfight. This is advanced. If you're not able to, you're not doing this. It's not just target shooting people. Yes, now, stage 10 is going to be a little controversial, but we're doing things to help you survive an actual gunfight. And that means movement. And movement means unorthodox positions. And to train an unorthodox position so they become orthodox to you so you improve and get better. So, you're surprised. You're in a Walmart and boom, there's an active shooter. Maybe you see the blast over there. Or, or it's a, an attack overseas somewhere and they're trying to kidnap you. So, we're going to stagger step, charge step, stagger step off the center line while you draw one, two, and three safely between wall to wall. That's all you can basically do at most indoor ranges. Then you're going to transition a left hand stagger step one, two, and three. Now, would I do this in a crowded church? Probably not, but you see this kind of thing when, you know, gun battles happen around cars, ducking and one-handed? Yes. Is it easier, biomechanically, much easier to do this in a stable stance? Of course, and you should practice that as well. But my hits might not even be there, but certainly people do this to get out of dodge, get out of the situation, get your family out of the situation, or to get to cover or walk over the hood of a car before you get to an engine block. That's why you're going to do this one. Okay? All right, stage 10, stutter step off the X, movement to get out of dodge, to get to cover, etc., to get out of there from an ambush. Okay.
same thing! There we go. All right, not so bad, not so bad. With movement, one-handed, sideways. Again, you want to do this in a crowded church, but initially, you, this is movement behind a car to get covered, get behind the engine block, uh, over the hood, over the, the roof, things like that. This is what we see, and you're getting better at difficult things. Four out of the six are critically, vitally important. Upper thoracic, near the spine on either side, and the upper goodies. This one would have taken out his hand. That's also a good thing, right? And this one, not so much, but at least I didn't hit an innocent bystander, and I still hit my target. In reality, in shootings, all the best stats we have, NYPD, years of history, only 20% of your hit are going to be hits. Only 20% of shots fired. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, you want to survive a gun fight? Stage 11 is still in seven yards. It is a what I call a fast five from a fiend, uh, feigned surrender compliance position. Okay, so this can work if someone just came in to rob a store, or this could be someone saying, asking for your wallet. What I do is I turn slightly, just slightly away from the target, my head down like I'm scared, flinch response, because you probably will be, and uh, I blade a little bit to the target. Hands go up. I usually will keep, because I'm right-handed, my left hand a little bit lower than my right, so it's faster to clear my garment, because I carry appendix. Uh, might be the other way if you're carrying outside waistband during winter time to throw open your jacket. But anyway, if you were first person, I bleed off a little bit, I tuck my head a little bit, feign compliance, and from there, I'm ready to go. It could also be um, if they're trying to rob you directly, be okay, man, okay, man, I'll give you my wallet. And it looks like you're dropping this hand psychologically to them to maybe go for your wallet, which helps you beat the Oda loop to get your shirt up and make your draw. So if he's here, uh, whether I was here or here or whatever, I might fiend off to the side a little bit. I drop my head a little bit, but I keep my, my near eye on the, the threat. And then, oh man, okay, I'll give you my wallet, I'll give you a wallet, or no verbalization. If it's just a robbery, I blade away. In reality, I might blade even further to hide the draw, the counter ambush, and then I go to work, fast five center mass. All right, here we go. Check it out. All right, guys, that's not great. I mean, I got all five in the box in a, in a hand uh, deviation, so what, less than five inches, like four inches, I would say. I got two here, which is perfect. That's really kind of, the spine would be a little bit curving. Two right there, which is perfect. Other three, a little too low for me. And that's because this is a very light pistol. This Delta's 22.2 ounces. If it was a 25 ounce pistol, I feel much better that I would have had them more like that. But does everyone really carry the heavy pistol they want people to think they do? Not necessarily. Uh, but those are still good, uh, pretty uh, pretty effective hits. This would still be probably on the spine. These two are too low for my liking. Uh, but, you know, this is something good you should practice, and that's why it was stage 11. All right, next up, real street survival skills. Stage number 12, guys, real situations. Someone confronting you, possibly a deadly threat, someone road raging, and they got a baseball bat or crowbar in their hand. Or boom, they pull a knife or a gun. Seven yards, triple tap, three shot. And uh, what this is, is bladed sideways verbal de-escalation skills. I told you, back off, man. Back off, man. Don't make me do it. And what this does is every state has different brandishing laws and uh, assault laws. So you got to know those guys. If you're going to carry, you got to know your laws. Uh, but no matter what, this is often a good thing to do if it's to something that doesn't require a draw right away. I'm going to blade myself sideways, whether you're carrying at 3 o'clock or appendix. What this does is allows you to defeat your, gov your cover garment, get a master grip on your pistol without necessarily showing it, but making the intent to the possible attacker, to the attacker, very known. Okay? So psychologically and legally, you have warned them, you have it brandished, you have it pointed uh, a weapon at them, or 
anything like that until it is necessary. Back off, dude. I said, back off. Back the fuck off. And now the gun comes out. Or he keeps coming forward, even though you let it be known that you're carrying, basically, to any reasonable person without necessarily legally threatening them. And, um, you know, there's still a deadly threat. Okay? So, you play it sideways. You lift your shirt. Or you could flay your jacket open and do it over here. I used to carry outside waistband at 5 o'clock. You blade sideways, and yet, to cameras and everyone involved, it's kind of, they can kind of tell what's going on, but you haven't even seen my pistol, and yet, I have my master grip established, che cheating the draw. And if someone's walking forward with a weapon in their hand, or you, their hand behind their leg, or they do have a baseball bat or a knife in the hand, you know exactly what's going on if they're reaching in their waistband. So you have cheated your draw time substantially while doing everything in the legally, probably, and observed by cameras and witnesses the best way possible. And hopefully they back off and you don't have to use deadly force. Okay. Seven yards. Three shots. Whoa, back off, dude! Back off, dude! Back the fuck off, drop it! <laughs> And deal with follow-up actions. From there, make sure that they have dropped the weapon or they are down. They don't have accomplices. Start taking your video and pictures and look around for witnesses and everything. Assess the situation and then call 911 after you remember to shut up. All right, guys, here's the results of stage 12. Very happy with these two upper thoracic, fairly... Uh, in a very good area. The third one up here, possibly not a stopper. It really depends. Brachial plexus, breaking the collarbone, hopefully hitting that artery, you know, but it might just miss everything. But two out of three on a triple tap, very uh, pr pr pretty fight stopping. All right, guys, stage 13, going back to 15 yards now. Just like a certain church shooting, this one, you're going for a headshot. I generally try to get this within three seconds, which puts on a lot of pressure even in training, yet let alone the real world, with a moving target executing people to make a precise shot at 15 yards within three seconds. Uh, I can't time it today because the camera's videotaping. But guys, this is the one time I do like to just stand there, relaxed, bouncer with my hands, ready to grab the, uh, grabbing the cover garment to lift it as you see all the guys active self-protection or whatever. Do I think most reactive self-defense situations, you know instantly the threat. You're standing there for the robbers to come in with your hands right there, absolutely not. That's why you see all this. But sometimes you are keyed up, hopefully, with your awareness skills to a potential threat, or you happen just to be there right away, and it's center line to your shirt to lift if you carry an appendix, and go for that headshot. Hopefully I make it, guys. I usually do. This gives you a lot of confidence if you put this in your training. Um, gives you a lot of confidence, and so it's good just for that. Uh, I might miss. Again, this is my friend's new pistol, only the second time I am shooting it. And rapid fire, the second shots. Sometimes I throw low, and sometimes uh, both days I'm throwing some shots a little high right as we've seen. Hopefully I'm not, and I can still get a center of the head, depending on your eyesight, you know, basically going for the tee box, which is really the center of the human head on average. So that's what we're going for. Okay, here we go. See how I did, empty gun, and uh, let's see how we did. Well guys, it happened. I'm not clearing this advanced stage. I missed, I pulled the shot left, and uh, usually I don't miss, even with DA revolvers that are new that I've tested and evaluated in the past. So, I'm gonna run this one again, uh, because I think I should. Again, you're pushing yourself to become a better shooter. New pistol, I missed, I hope I don't again. All right, let's see. All right, guys, so a little high, but centered on 
the halfway width of the head, which is used across the eyebrows, the T box, and actually set it perfectly on that track. All right, guys, last stage, stage 15, how to survive an actual gunfight. We're going at 15 yards, or you go 25, 20 if you have it. If you have longer, push yourself, go longer. This range, only 15 yards. So, and you're getting yourself to some kind of cover. If it has a swinger, use a swinger. I'm going to use my bag as if I got out of my car and went behind the engine block and the A frame. Uh, if you don't have that or outdoor range, go ahead and maybe like kneel here if they allowed it or kneel down, uh, etc. Try something different, cover if possible, a little bit of movement going into it if possible. Indoor range, so my little bit of movement is this. Again, 15 or longer, up to 25 yards if that's what you have, that's what you should be doing. I got five shots left. Hopefully we can get them off and here we go. Driving around in my automobile, gunfight behind the wheel. That is the end of the test, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I made all hits. All right, guys, made all hits. It looks like four out of the five were in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One was right up there, which is also a very good up into Jurassic hit. So I'm very happy with that performance at 15 yards. Now, I cheated or done what I should have, and I spent an extra round. So this was a 51 round test uh, for me because I got one miss on the headshot. But guys, so it would be like a, uh, I don't know, I would call that a 99% uh, in reality, I would take off for those if it was my type of scoring, not for these two hits. So, you know, that's probably a, let's see, three bad out of 50, be a 94%, I believe. Hopefully you guys like that, and I'll wrap up here in one second. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed my making the best use of 50 rounds. Everyone wants to know that now. Hopefully you like what I think all these different positions, the best way of training to actually survive a real life and force death encounter. And um, guys, please hit that subscription button. This was an expensive thing to do. Please hit that subscription button, the thumbs up, the uh, notification bell. Check out all my playlists, combatives, jujitsu, catch wrestling, all that stuff. My four and a half hour Better to treat your jitsu DVD on BJJ Fanatics. Best place in town. Stream or download anytime. And uh, please excuse me. Are you here in the background? As I do my best Paul uh, thing.